the battery arrived in an even bigger box. Well, here it is, the Savage Bobber. It came in a tiny box, but it's a kit, so I guess it's all flat packed. Here's the instruction manual. And I see I'm going to need some super glue, some Yoohoo, but looks like some serious construction required, folks. Uh, need to buy some foam glue. So, what's inside the box? Got the wing. Looks like it folds in half, and that's the ailerons. And the tail. Uh, all the the wood parts, more laser cut, uh, the carbon fibre rods for the fuselage, and that's the fuselage there, and propeller, receiver, servos, tiny servos, and a little motor, it's a MC1108, 4000 kV. Looks like I've got some work cut out. So the first thing I want to do is connect up all the electronics, bind the receiver to my transmitter and make sure everything's working okay. We have a blinking blue LED. I've set up my transmitter for a new model, Savage B, and the binding procedure is just to hold the binding button down, switch on the transmitter, and it binds. Connected up one of the servos, the elevator servo, and that's working okay. I'll connect up the rest of the servos now. Here we've got rudder, elevator, and ailerons. Connect up the motor, hold on to it like that. Then we have the motor. All the electronics seem to work. I've read through the instruction manual and it looks pretty comprehensive. There's a fair bit of work to do and I'll have to get started. Well, it's a nice rainy day outside so I can finally start building my Savage Bobber. The first instructions say to start with the two sides of the fuselage, building the box section and the nose, so I'll start with that. Right, that was a little bit fiddly. I had to shorten one of the formers to get everything to fit up with the plastic fuselage. Now the next step is to laminate, it says F41, F4 and F41, but they don't exist. I think it's a typo. I do have an F14 and an F14 one in the mould here, so I think I'll use that instead. So I'll just do that lamination now. Uh, the next step is to attach the C11 former underneath. Well, that was a bit fiddly. I managed to get more glue on my fingers, I think, than the plane. Uh, and none of my fingerprint readers will recognise my fingerprints anymore. Uh, but I'm ready to carry on.
is coming along slowly. I've put the rear fuselage formers in, including a very tiny one at the end, little ply one. Uh, I've now completed this stage, which is the basic box section for the fuselage. Uh, to get it nice and straight, I actually added some little strengthening formers, uh, and that's pulled it quite straight because um, it was a little bit crooked. So I'm going to shore up all the connections now with some glue and get that all set before I carry on with the next phase. This is where I got to yesterday. Uh, added the little box section at the top for the wing mount. What I did find difficult was a lot of the slots in the plastic parts are too small for the plywood and the plywood's very brittle and it's easy to break when you're trying to force it into the slots. So a lot of trouble there. I put a lot of effort into trying to get the uh, fuselage symmetrical and I've added these little diagonal braces here to help straighten it. Uh, it feels reasonably robust. Uh, today I plan to fit the stringers across the top there and fit the foam sides to the fuselage and then make a start on the wing. I've now glued the little stringer across the top there and next step is to glue the foam sides and underbelly and attach the tail. For the tail plane and rudder I need to cut along these sections here and the instructions advise to use tape but I've elected to use uh, little nylon hinges that I bought which may be slightly heavier but I think will be a bit more reliable and it saves me having to go out and buy some expensive tape. I've now attached the moving surfaces on the rudder and elevator using the nylon hinges. With hindsight I think it would have been better to use the tape because the foam was quite difficult to cut into uh, and I haven't done a great job. I managed to stab my finger and I'm about to glue the rudder onto the elevator and then the elevator onto the rear of the fuselage. Day three, and it's another lovely rainy day, which is great for construction. Next step is to install the rudder and elevator servos. Let's get started. The servos are now sitting in the fuselage, ready to be attached to the control rods. The rods connect to the Z connectors using the heat shrink tubing, like so. The rudder and elevator servos are now installed and connected up. This next step to build the wing consists of gluing in the ribs, then gluing in the carbon fiber rods, then folding over the top of the wing and gluing that down.
So we just need to insert these little carbon fibre rods in and we're supposed to do it after we glue the top of the wing on but I've decided to do it beforehand just to make it a little bit easier. Okay now the glue is set on the ribs and the spars. I've applied a little bit of steam to the leading edge of the wing to help with the pressure on the top and I've decided to use this method of holding the wing in place while the, the glue dries using a couple of rulers and some clothes pegs. So I'm about to glue it up. Wish me luck. While the glue dries on the wing, I'll start making the wheels, which consists of laminating these little plywood inserts and these foam outers. With the wings completed, the next step is to attach the wings to the fuselage. So I need to thread the aileron wiring through the body, push the rods into the slots and use foam glue to glue the wings in place. And here's a radio test before I glue the wings on. Put that on, so that uh, and rudder. And now it's time to fit the motor. Well, I've fitted the motor and I've attached the receiver and the battery with Velcro. I'll finish covering off the nose once I've got a permanent position for those items. It's uh, ready for its test flight. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll see if this crate flies.